So we had on the chapter 28 that uses charlatanism and trickery. <clears throat> it is again a very important chapter in the exercise and the practice of, of mediumship, but it's equally important for those who participate in the works of mediumship, not for all the mediums per se, yes, for all the mediums, but also for those who do not have an extensive or more uh, extensive mediumship, but participate in the works that associates with mediumship. Again, very important to remind always that spiritism does not, did not invent mediumship, that, that um, mediumship does not belong to spiritism, does not belong to everyone. It's one of natural human faculties. And like everything, all of our faculties can and will be exploited by individuals who seek to exploit others. Okay, and um, as a, just a recap for last, for, from last month, there was a long time ago already, that the cystic exploitation always comes from someone, individual, a group of individuals with quite low moral values, but with a good uh, intellectual values. Someone who has some intellectual development, but to have not exercise the potential of, a, of um, mature, uh, morally speaking. And the explanation seems to be over individuals or groups with even lesser uh, individual intellectual values. They do not seek to allow reason to prevail over other aspects. Individuals were very often fixated on and truthful dogmas or sophisms and or radicals. Once you become a radical, once you become a too far for one side or another, you lose your ability to reason and then you become an easy prey for those to seek to exploit you using your fixation on dogmas, on sophisms or your radical attitudes. I think this is important to say because when you go and you, we criminalize the charlatans, the triggerers, those who seem to deserve, yes, they have committed a crime, but we commit a crime against whom? Who are their target? What is our degree of responsibility or become prey of those individuals? When we relinquish our reasoning abilities. When you place our reasoning abilities at the hand of others, say, you tell me what to think. You tell me what to do with my uh, potentials. Whose really fault is this? <clears throat> because it's very easy to point fingers at others and we have very often to look at ourselves first, first and see why am I being victimized by that? or why are others out there being victimized by that? But always, of course, look at oneself first. And here we have discussed so far mediums for hire, and it, the talk continues today, it's likely, that in, in spirituals, again, in spirituals, in a way to the suggest for Kardec is, a meter should not charge for the exercise of mediumship. Uh, Jesus have told us, give for free what you receive for free. In, 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 in the spiritual, we understand that in mediumship, the medium is a, an instrument, so to say, at the hands of the spirit. And the spirit does the work that the spirit use their faculty to provide the public or even that medium him or herself, some instructions, some messages. And therefore the 
if anyone is, wants to be rewarded, it should be the spirit who does the work. I know it's hard to understand in many cultures. I know it's hard to, especially on the more raw capitalist society, the idea that someone will spend hours without getting material financial rewards for it. There is a suggestion of Kardec. There's a suggestion in accordance to Christianity. Uh, we are not condemned or accusing anyone who does not follow this. We actually understand, and Kardec will very shortly touch on this very important aspect of this discussion. But in accordance with spiritism, a medium should not gain to seek any financial or material uh, profit from the exercise of this attribute that was borrow, there was given for that reincarnation, perhaps for multiple reincarnations, but always with the intention of as provide that medium, an instrument of elevate him or herself morally. And if that's not reward in itself, look at ourselves as a eternal spirit and not at one single incarnation, I don't know what could be more valuable than that. <clears throat> and we stop on item 309. Yes. And um, <clears throat> we continue now. If okay. anybody has any questions, this is very simple. Again, doesn't deal with leadership per se. So any questions, any comments, please just go ahead. Okay. It's 309. We will now briefly address amateur trickery. That is the innocent fraud of certain pranksters. This deception may be practiced as entertainment, as unimportant and frivolous meetings, but never in serious gatherings that only admit honest persons. Someone may derive pleasure from momentary trickery, but he or she would have to be strangely patient to keep up such a role for months and years, and each time for long hours in a row. Only some kind of profit could lead someone to persevere for so long and profit. We will repeat, should immediately arouse suspicion. Okay, so this basically is what I said. Um, this deception may be practiced as entertainment at unimportant frivolous meetings. When I say unimportant frivolous meeting, it, is not, it doesn't say directly to the meeting, it say to everyone inside of that, in that event. Everyone participated in that. The one who is practicing the charlatanism as well as the group over there that's there sim simply for entertainment and frivolity. If that's what you're seeking for, that's what you get. Mm. That would not happen in a more serious meeting. And again, we have to take responsibility very often for the things that happens to us. If I'm, I'm seeking just frivolous entertainment, there is always someone ready to, to offer it. But very often they will do that for a, some kind of profit. And um, <clears throat> if they are on the wrong, so are we. And again, you can, you can fool a little group for a long time. You can fool a large group for a short time, but you cannot fool everyone forever. Eventually, uh, all trickery, all charlatans will be revealed. Okay, and um, the simple fact that someone is gaining profit from the exercise of leadership is already a red flag, is already uh, provide fuel for suspicion and for uh, interrogation and for investigation. Those who have nothing to hide, they will have no problem with go ahead, investigate, 
as much as you want. Those who have something to hide will be very resistant to it. Okay. I think I think it's important uh, to to notice that the Ouija board fall into to this category, right? It's very popular uh, play for adolescents and uh, people. Um, and what happens when you're playing with the Ouija board is, you know, you may attract spirits, but what spirits are going to come? Of course, not serious spirits. Serious spirits are not going to, to waste their time. So, you know, we, we read these and uh, sometimes it seems far-fetched, but uh, it actually is something that is very, uh, very common, right? You can go to, to some toy stores and buy a Ouija board. And many, many people have played with Ouija board. So it's not something far-fetched. It's something that is quite real, actually. It's a lot more common than we, we may think that it is. It's not some rare uh, activity, no. It's a lot, a lot more common than what we think. And, and, and the risk is not that you are attracting um, mocking spirits or uh, not serious spirits. The risk is that they decide to stay, right? They like where they find themselves. They associate with one of the individuals that is playing there. Uh, and, uh, and if they have, uh, you know, um, suspicious tendencies, they will act on that. And then it becomes something more of a problem and becomes a risk. So the, the, the plane itself doesn't have much uh, risk, but the consequences are where the risks may come. Yep. You can with open doors that become difficult to close in some situations. Yeah. Okay, 310. One might argue that mediums cannot donate all their time to the public in the interest of spiritism because they too need to make a living. However, is it in the interest of spiritism or in their own interest that they donate their time? In my day, anticipate it before anything as possible lucrative occupation. Dedicated people can always be found at a price. Do they have only this occupation at their disposal? We mustn't forget that whether they are of high order or low order, spirits are the souls of the dead. If morality and religion obligate us to respect their physical remains, then there is an even greater obligation to respect their spirits. What would we say about someone who dug up a corpse in order to display it for money because it was, a, was capable of arousing curiosity? Would it be any less disrespectful to display the spirit than the body under the pretext of being curious to see how the spirit acts? And what we should, and we should note that the price for a seat will reflect the scope of the tricks and the attractiveness of the show. Even if during its lifetime, a spirit had been a comedian, it would certainly not suspect that after death, it would encounter an entrepreneur who would make it perform for free while he or she made a profit from it. We must remember that both physical and intellig intelligent manifestations are only permitted by God for our instruction. Okay, so can I start saying that one might argue that mediums uh, cannot donate all their times <clears throat> to the public in the interest of spiritism. I think the, the import all of it is the most important thing. Who would in, with some degree of reason suggest that anyone has to donate all their time to anything whatsoever. Would a hospital expect a, doc a doctor to donate to their 24 hours to the hospital?
with a bank, expect that the banker donate that all time to the to the financial institutions. So the the that all here is, is relevant and it's is important to put in perspective that a medium is a medium 24 7. That's what the medium is. It has that faculty. Okay. Um, a faculty that he or she needs to learn to be over control of it, to be to have absolute control of it, to have absolute domain of it, that will that he or she will put it at the use of the good spirits or to, to the spirits, the mediumship meetings or anything of that nature when that that medium he or she have fulfilled its daily responsibilities you know with family with work with uh, everything else that one has to do that that time dedicated to mediumship is a time that that individual can dedicate to, to spiritism that takes that time one two three hours whatever that may be and that time is a time for moral profit over material profit, period. So no, although a medium is a medium 24 seven, a medium should not be exercising mediumship 24 seven because that would lead to a radical behaviors and would very likely mess up its social life, its professional life, it, a mirror has to be in control of that mediumship. The mirror has to understand, has to know how and when to use it. And in accordance with spiritism, the time dedicated to use it should be meant for moral profit, not for material profit. <clears throat> and we, what Kardec places over here is that if we incarnate need to be respected with our times, with our time that we need to be respected with our objectives, what we seek to do and not to do. If there are religions and doctrines out there that gives great importance to respect of a cadaver a dead body, they have to want to respect that, that the dead body that is just a, at this point to decaying organic material. How much more respect should they have to the spirit, to him or herself, the one who has the feelings, the intelligence, the objectives, the one who is designed to progress more intellectually, intellectually to reach the spiritual purification that awaits us, how much respect should that part of us belong if even decaying organic material deserves respect? So respect to the medium, respect to, to the spirit, I'm sorry, to the spirit's time, to the spirit's necessity to progress and to grow is equally important. And that ties to the fact that it is possible that some incarnate with greater intellectual values than the spirit itself, that's another debate the other spiritualist group will bring up. But the fact is, if I discarnate today, end up in the spiritual plane, I'm going to have the same amount of intelligence that I have right now. And if someone with great intellectual abilities choose to exploit me, he may have the potential to do so. If that great intellectual value is associated with great moral values, that will not happen. But someone the pride of morality with great intellectual value being a sense of medium could perhaps exploit me. But I deserve be better respect because my time should be also be used for my modern intellectual progress. 
And if I, someone will exploit me as an spirit for profit, I think the one would argue that that person is really compromising him or herself with the natural laws. And again, guys, that keeps reminding us. We must remember that both physical and intelligent manifestations are only permitted by God for our instructions. Again, mediumship is here as a tool to help us to evolve, to, to progress, to evolve morally, not even intellectually, but morally. All right, comments, questions? Yeah, I think it's, uh... It's important to, to remember that uh, mediumship in spirit is, is used uh, to, to help us grow morally and intellectually. So you, you, you shouldn't find in spiritism, you know, uh, the card reading type of mediumship, prediction of the future, communications from uh, our dead loved ones in the sense of, uh, of, of fulfilling our uh, futile curiosity. So we understand the differences between uh, mediumship in spiritism and mediumship outside spiritism when uh, it's, it is understood as a way to receive uh, communications from the other side on uh, material things. And... Um, and how they address this. But uh, what Spiritism and Kardec brings to us is really uh, that we should be aware that is dangerous, that can cause uh, disturbances and, uh, and, and things that can happen um, when we connect with, uh, with less evolved spirit. Um, you know, it's it's a, a new concept here uh, in this country, as Elmo mentioned before, because you know, mediumship here uh, in, for the spiritualists, it's uh, there is a you consult with a medium to receive communications, to receive guidance, to receive different things, and. Uh, and, the, and then the question becomes, well, when it's risky and when it's not. Um, and we, we are not going to say that 100% of the communications received by the paid mediums are deceitful or are a fraud. No, there are serious communications received and uh, there are serious guidance and assistance received by spirits that are going to communicate again, depending on the intention of the medium and the, the, the merit of the one looking for information. So someone that is really uh, in need of help and assistance, doesn't know any other way of doing it, goes after a medium, uh, pays for the medium to receive help and assistance and truly deserves help and assistance, our protecting superior spirits can be present and can be provide the assistance needed because that person merit to receive the assistance. Okay, so we're not going to say here that all mediumship, paid mediumship is, is a fraud. No, uh, the, the only thing we're trying to say that Spiritism brings to us is the risk, the danger of paid mediumship and of mediums that are doing this for profit. It's a risk for those, especially for the mediums, but also for those receiving the communications. Because again, if I go to a not so serious medium, uh, once you paid something, the medium has to give you something in return. And if the medium doesn't receive anything that day, you know, it can behave like Woody, Whoopi Goldberg in Ghost right at the beginning. She was faking everything uh, for, for her, own, her own profit until she starts, the mediumship starts to play and uh, that all hell breaks loose uh, for those that haven't seen the movie Ghost, which is a long, long time ago. It's, it's one of the movies that best represent the, the 
activity of the spirits around us. Okay. Okay. So just do me a favor. Don't say long, long time ago. <laughs> You're making me look so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> But uh, anything that every everything that John said, the way you're going to read now in three eleven, is exact exactly what Kardec can going to cover for us now. Okay, okay, three eleven. In spite of these moral considerations, we of course cannot deny the possibility that there are paid mediums who are honest and conscientious, since they are honest individuals in all occupations. We are only addressing abuse. Nonetheless, we must agree that for the reasons we have given, there is more likelihood for abuse among paid mediums than among those who consider their faculty as a gift and use it only to serve others. Besides the circumstances, the degree of trust or distrust that we concede to paid mediums depends more than anything else on their character immorality. Mediums who have a serious and eminently useful purpose, but who are prevented from using their time in another activity are for this reason exempt from other obligations and cannot be confused with speculating mediums who have premeditatively made mediumship a business. Therefore, according to the motive and the purpose, spirits may condemn, absolve, or even favor them they judge the intent more than the material fact. Okay, so, <clears throat> sorry. This is basically everything that John, that John just told us uh, right now. Um, we of course cannot deny the possibility that there are paid mediums who are honest and consci conscientious. The, the thinkers that are, I don't know, a hundred folds, a thousand folds more mediums than medium spiritists out there, right? Is again, the, the, the faculty does not belong to spiritism. The faculty is a natural human faculty. So it's possible and it's reasonable to accept that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of mediums who have never had access to this discussion, to this conversation, to this book, to this doctrine, who much on the contrary have been created in a, co uh, uh, developed in a culture have learned um, from that culture that it is a honest, uh, clean way of making a living, making using of mediumistic faculty. Now, even among us, those who have developed themselves, who have learned that they have this faculty, they have learned that this faculty, be, faculty can be used as a profession, so to say. Among us, those, there are those who will be honest in the exercise of the faculty, and there will be, there will be not so honest in the exercise of this faculty. In the same way that you have that in everywhere. The same way that you may have a, a banker who completely honest away to the client and the one who try to bring profit to the bank regardless of the necessities of, of the client. There will be, I don't know, surgeons that we may offer not absolutely necessary surgery to, to individuals there in every profession. There will be a bakery guy who will sell an old bread saying that it's fresh. And there will be a merchant who will change the expiration date on a merchandise and sell him in common. And there is honest and dishonest people everywhere. That would not be different. 
uh, with mediumship. And there will be those who have the mediumship, understand their faculty, having developed themselves themselves in a culture in where the exercise of the faculty can be used as a means of, of a material profit. Upon under, came in contact with this faculty, with this doctrine, I'm sorry, will stop charging. We understand the concept. You will agree, so to say, with the doctrine and stop using this as a, as a business. So in the spirit is what, and Jean said very well as in the beginning, there's no condemnation of anything. There is no point finger or anything. That's why in the very beginning, I say point finger to self first. You are being exposed to this conversation. Uh, we have seen a lot of people coming and go in the story of mediumship because aspect of the mediumship that was disagreeable to them. So if a true medium, serious medium, come in contact with the mediumship, or with this doctrine, likely to follow the, the suggestions of, of the doctrine. But doesn't mean that all the mediums out there who exercise the faculty and seek to profit from it are dishonest. I would like to say, of course, I'm biased. They are uneducated on the values of the, of the faculty. And of course, those on the other side who absolutely accept the idea of getting brought from the from leadership, you have their own argument. So you're not point fingers, not saying you are wrong, you are right. And by the most important thing is the intention. So therefore, according to the motive and the purpose, the spirits may condemn, absolve, or even favor them. What do you mean by favor them? So will favor charging? Well, as Ron said, perhaps that very honest medium that does not fake the phenomena, that does not use their own faculty, their own thought to give a message, meaning that um, I'm a medium for hire, I work with mediumship, and I'm, I am honest with it. And you come to me and say, Here's your ten dollars. I want a message from the spirits, and I sit over there, five, ten, fifteen, thirty minutes. Nothing happens. I would say, here, here's ten dollars back. Unfortunately, today didn't happen. I cannot charge for something that I could not provide. Now, if I, if I have to pay the rent for that business space in Manhattan, and the first client come in and I give the money back because nothing happens. The second one, I give the money back because that not happened. The third, the third client come in and nothing is happening and I have to think, oh, really state my heart is very expensive. I have to pay this rent. If I keep giving my money back, how am I gonna maintain this door open? Am I willing to maintain my honesty? Or what there is a likelihood that will provide a, what I could say, a fake news, a fake communication, because now I've been pressed, because this is my business, this is my way of making a living. If I am totally honest and living in an environment that there is no other means for the good spirits to manifest themselves, the good spirits may use actually uh, one medium they use the faculty as a for profit, but who is absolutely honest and does not know any better. Because again, the knowledge and the intent of that really counts, right? One cannot hold the medium responsible to practice mediumship with Jesus if never heard of it. 
if you never had contact with that doctrine, if perhaps never even heard of this, or someone, the Praxmilian ship, I don't know, the very top mountain somewhere in the Himalayans. It's possible, but it's too honest. It's too sick to, to use the fact in a very proper, honest way. And is the only one available for the good spirits. They're gonna use whatever they have. But again, in association with the moral character of that medium. Otherwise, there is no affinity. Even if the good spirits want to, there is no affinity. Okay. Yeah, and um, the again, it's uh, it's knowledge and responsibility, right? Uh, we've seen cases of people that came to spiritism, <clears throat> study mediumship, study all of this, and decided to go out there and uh, and start charging for their mediumship. Um, we've seen authors that have produced books that. Uh, you know, used a lot of the books, the first books like Chico Xavier that donated all the proceeds because Chico always said that the work is not mine, it's from the spirit, so I cannot charge for something that is not mine. Uh, but there is an author in Brazil that decided that uh, she needed to profit from it, that she needed to make a living from it. And, uh, and she's continued producing <coughs> very a large number of books and uh, but at least she said I'm I'm not a spiritist anymore uh, I'm a spiritualist again the quality of the books went downhill if you are serious about studying the, uh, the material but uh, you know uh, again spiritism doesn't condemn anyone doesn't it's just explain cause and consequence when you are exposing yourself to the spirits out there, uh, when you open the door, you have to be very conscious, aware of the risks of what who's going to come inside those doors. And if you have you if you have the help and assistance of the spiritual benefactors, if, they are, if your intentions are noble, they will protect you. But uh, if you are looking for uh, shortcuts you are exposing yourself to risk and the more you know the more responsible you are well that's what spiritism teaches us very extremely important is um, knowledge and intention right with those two things there's the basis of a more reasonable and fair judgment of everything and it's not up, really not up us to be the judge over here, but in reality, we all judge all the time. Again, very important also, the, the good spirituality may not have a, a, another recourse, another resource to utilize a completely honest, with elevated moral character, who gets profit from leadership because doesn't know any better. Okay, uh, 12. Okay, 312. The same considerations do not apply to sonambulists who utilize their faculty for profit. Although this exploitation is also subject to abuse, and unprofitableness comprises the greatest guarantee of sincerity. Their situation is different because it is their own spirit who acts and consequently is always at their disposal. Actually, they are only willingly exploit themselves because they are free to use their own faculties as they please. Whereas speculative mediums exploit the souls of the dead. Hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> Gekadek opens the, the room for to, to, to question what was the difference between right a sonobolistic or sonobolism and um, leadership, right? 
and we have studied that before and this is my least favorite topic to manage because it's so hard and the differentiation sometimes is is so gray that it's hard to say when does one start when the other one ends because most things in life is not a clear black and white right and sonambulism can open room for questions that at least i don't have the answers <laughs> but uh, it can become a very confusing uh, subject. But sonambulism is really in a state of independence. That it's more complete than dreams. So when we dream or when we sleep, the, the spirit seeing that the physical body is at rest and does not need its input at that period of time or the physical body is at rest, it partially detaches from the physical body, goes into the spiritual realm, bring of course the petty spirit, right, always, and have experiences in the spiritual world or have experiences in the physical world away from the physical body. Okay, I think that's that covers pretty much dreams, or at least the very basic of dreams, right? It's a lot more complex than that, also, right? So it's a degree of independence of the spirit. So anomalies is potentially more freedom when you go to this when we are free from the physical body in a dream, you're not so free. There's a lot of attachment to the world. There's a lot of more limitations, okay, than in sonambulism. In sonambulism, your perceptions are extremely augmented. You can go and explore a lot more. You, you, all your senses are much more augmented, you know, you, because we know that the senses belong to the spirit and the senses while we are incarnate are extremely, um, what is the word, um, decreased, okay, limited, extremely limited by the physical body, by the density of the physical body. But the more we free ourselves from this physical body, more augmented, more close to the Purity of the spirit, it, 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 it is. And in Sodomilism, we have that tremendous freedom to explore the, the spiritual realm. And the Sodomilists, some are able to bring those, those messages, bring those experiences to us. So a medium, the medium comes have a <clears throat> peri spirit to peri spirit uh, interaction. The spirit passes its thoughts to the medium who expresses it in writing, who expresses it in words or, or whatever the faculty the medium is. So the, the spirit is doing the work. In sonobulism is more of anemic meaning it's made by their own spirit, not for a third party. So it is the, the medium's spirit, refueled, which is wrong, but that <laughs> makes no sense at this time. The medium's spirit that has tremendous freedom from the physical realm to go and explore the, the spiritual world and pass its experiences past what it's sensing, what's feeling, hearing, what it's uh, observing and pass it to us. So it's a more anemic process. So it's an humblest can say, but it's me who's doing the work. It's not in spirit. Does it open room for um, abuse? I said, everything can be abused. Why would not a sonambulistic 
if a baker, if a banker, if a doctor, if a um, construction work can, can abuse their faculties, why could Madison abolish it? But then it becomes more like, oh, I can charge because now it's me who's doing the work. Yes. Indeed, yes. But again, it goes to knowledge, it goes with intention. You know, what do you seek to gain from it? And 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 comes to honesty. I'm describing what exactly is, is happening. I'm describing what exactly I am observing, and I am repeating the words that I'm actually hearing from the, in the spiritual world. I'm not make them up in accordance to my own interest. Two different things, right? But again, we would like that when exercising those faculties, that it not be used as a business to avoid the risk of, of charlatanism. Because again, if I have to pay rent to my space in Manhattan, it becomes very hard to pay rent if this if I'm not having access to the spiritual world. And the, the sonambulism also requires some assistance from the spirit from the spirits. We see the, the book in Domains of, of, of Mediumship that one of the mediums where the sonambulic uh, potential also when he wants to do it, he used to be uh, surrounded by two spirits, elevated spirits, would help and assist that spirit to be able to perform it. So there is always a degree of assistance from from the spirits as well. I think uh, it's important to 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 uh, to remem remember. And then remind that uh, sonambulist is a trance state, right? You, the spirit, the, the medium is, or the sonambulic is in a trance. Uh, the physical body is, uh, it, it's not, uh, it, it may act or may not act, right? You have the sonambulist, what we call here the sleepwalking, right? So the physical body is active, but the, 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 the spirit is not. Uh, conscious of the physical body activity. The activity happens in the spiritual world. Uh, also, what we call psychics here in this country is what we are describing here, right? A psychic, it's one that uh, is having their own experiences in the spiritual world and coming and describing or giving their, their instructions. Uh, one of the most famous uh, sonambulic mediums here in this country is Edgar Case, right? Probably the most famous one. Uh, he used to give uh, prescriptions and he used to give uh, uh, predict the future, things like that. And he, it was always in a sonambulic state and uh, he was not conscious when he would wake up. Someone wouldn't take note of what he was saying. And uh, he wasn't, uh, he didn't accept the ideas that he brought normally, it was, which was very interesting. Um, so again, in theory, a psychic can charge for their services because it's their own work. But again, as I almost said in the beginning, where is the line between psychic and mediumship? You go to the, you, you, you go to the spiritual world, you interact with the spirit there and you bring what that, that spirit told you. So is this a psychic or a medium? It's a little bit of both, right? Because it's your own experience, but you are transmitting a message from someone else. So uh, it's, it's an important distinction here. We have to be very careful to understand the difference and the concept of sonambulism. Uh, I almost said it's very difficult and very complex to understand. Uh, because it's 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 a gray area between medium and uh, and uh, a medium that is interacting with directly with a spirit and a sonambulist that is experiencing him or herself in the spiritual world and bringing back to to report what they have experienced or bringing back the messages. 
but it's as Kardec says here, it's their own work. It's not an intermediary. So the way that Chico said, uh, it's not my work, it's the work of the spirits. I'm just uh, receiving, I'm just an intermediary, so I cannot charge. You, someone can argue that a, a psychic is doing their work themselves. It's their own experience in the spiritual world. So why can't they charge? But again, it goes to the, the risk of deceiving and uh, the, all the risks that Elmo exposed here. So the safest way is uh is is to to go to, to those that uh, do not charge again that's why edgar case was so popular and so uh, important in the in the work in this in the work that he did because he never charged anything and he was really someone very blessed with the the abilities and with the moral evolution that he had of course for not charging but uh, uh, it's important to remember uh, Edgar Case, his name, and you, you know, if you're curious, you should study a little bit more about him. Yeah, so, personally, and again, personally, I find very hard to believe that there are any spiritualist um, manifestation that is completely anemic. Again, personally, I believe there is always the association of, of spirits in the process. Uh, 13. Okay, 313. We are quite aware that our severity regarding mediums for hire sets us against all who exploit or intend to exploit their new, this new business, making them as well as their friends who follow their opinion, our staunch enemies. We may console ourselves by recalling that the money changers who, are expelled, who were expelled from the temple by Jesus could hardly have looked upon him with much favor. We are also faced with individuals who do not regard the manner with proper seriousness. Nevertheless, we feel we have the right to have and express our opinion. We would not try to force it on anybody. If the majority have adopted it, however, it's because they have apparently found it to be appropriate. At any, at any rate, we do not see how anyone could prove that there is less possibility for fraud and abuse in speculation than in our in unprofitableness. On our part, if our writings have contributed to casting doubt on mediumship for hire in France and other countries, we believe that it will not be one of the least services that have rendered to serious spiritism. I think this is a very good way to summarize all that you have talked about here. And I Put a question mark in the in the expression "new business." Uh, I think mediumship has been exploited since the beginning of civilization, when there was a group of people got together that would be a medium of you no know, intellectually wise who found a way to profit from that faculty. Since of the perhaps even the since the beginning of civilization, so I think that individuals using their faculty in an abusive way uh, throughout human history. Uh, perhaps not called mediumship until Kardec came in and gave its name. <clears throat> and when any, any time that we go against material profit, over moral profit, there's a good chance that it will be not well accepted by a mostly uh, materialistic society, by a society who desire material gains more than moral gains. So Kardec puts the, the example of that it's the likelihood that Jesus was somewhat condemned 
by the Synergium and who was, for have rejected the idea of use the temple as a market. And in his famous uh, walk to the to the market when he expelled all the merchants that were there. And if you, know, you remember, there was a place where there's a month, tremendous amount of, of business going off there in the, in the selling of offering for the sacrifices. Um, it was traditionally that not to do the sacrifices. Um, they would sacrifice in accordance to value of the animal they would sacrifice. A white dove was part of the more expensive one, but it was a sheep, it was this. Each one carries its value, and you can you could not bring it on. Well, I have I have my own um, white dove, I bring it. No, you have to buy it from this in edge or from that. So it was tremendous business going on and that Jesus uh, was against. And there's a famous thing that he gets angry, which is very hard for, for me or for us to understand, believe that, God, that Jesus got angry, but that he was physically forceful when throwing things out or on doubt. Well, I think it's sometimes we need to have a display, a physical display of our desire of disagreeable towards towards few things. So I don't doubt that he physically threw things away, but some people think that that's not possible. Um, I think that's possible without being angry. <clears throat> but because it put a stop on material gangs, people did not like that very much. So Kardec says here, we don't think that we, people are gonna like us very much for saying what we're saying, but we have the right to say, and we say because we believe it, that is the right thing to say. That every time that we limit the means of material gain, there will be those who seek only material gains, we will be uh, disagreeable. But spirit is again, we would not, try to force it on anybody. And if the majority of it, however, adopted it, however, is because they have apparently found it to be appropriate. Again, the individuals may use serious, honest, um, morally evolved or seeking moral involvement, use the faculty as a business upon entering contact with these ideals, these arguments, may favor this argument to say, oh, it's appropriate that I do not use it as a business anymore. You follow? And what Kardec saying is that that's what has had happened for the serious medium at his time, who would otherwise profit, materially profit from it, upon getting in, getting contact with this argument, have found it to be the appropriate one and has stopped making use of their faculties as a profession. If others does not, it's up to them. As Jean has said, we had seen in our speed center, individuals with faculties who had left the center on their own, they have been very clear here on their own and had to start doing some spiritualists, because now it's not a spiritist, uh, works for profit. They have not asked to live and they will never be asked to live. There's something about them that say uh, there is a mismatch over here and they, they opted to live. But that happened that the contrary as well of those who use it in a different way upon entering contact to it, you start using it only as a means of moral gain and no longer material gain. Again, to each own its own responsibility. Again, it comes to knowledge, to intention, to motive.
when you mentioned that uh, it's not a new business, we have to remember the Oracle of Delphi, right? In ancient Greece, right? Which yeah. was, was a, a medium there. You, you give the consultation, it's one of the most famous uh, mediumship places in history, right? Yep. Well, the Ten Commandments. Yeah. And again, uh, like uh, those that uh, when uh, Moses, uh, when they say that uh, Moses forbid uh, his people to talk to the dead, right? The prohibition. Uh, it's very interesting, right? You only forbid something that exists, right? You cannot forbid something that does not exist. So the fact that Moses forbids is because the communication of with the dead existed and uh, what he he was trying to to forbid is because they were abusing it that's why like uh, uh, like the other 600 commandments from Moses that all came from him and not from God uh, besides the 10 right uh, they were adapted to the necessities of uh, of uh, of a crowd of people uh, trying to cross the desert for 40 years, uh, being, you know, most of them very primitive. So with the tendency to, to abuse at every, every possibility and corner. So um, um, it's not new. And according to, I believe, Emmanuel, um, the word should not, the proper word would not be speaking, but to bargain, to negotiate. So the proper commandment, do not negotiate, do not bargain with the spirits, which is different than communicate with spirits. And, and that was exactly done because it was very commonplace amongst the Egyptians to have this business, so to say, with the spiritual word and the and the Hebrews at the time of slavery from the Egyptians have learned to practice that as well. And, and Moses needed to put a stop on that. Okay. Yep, uh, fraudulent manifestation. Fraudulent manifestations, 314. Those who do not accept the reality of the physical manifestations usually attribute them to fraud or special effects. They start with the principle that skillful illusionists can do things that seem miraculous to those who do not know their tricks. Hence, they conclude that mediums are mere schemers. We have already refuted this argument or opinion, particularly in our articles about Mr. Holmes and in the January and February 1858 issues of the Review of Spirit, we will therefore only say a few words on the matter before addressing a more serious topic. There is one consideration that will not escape anyone who reflects on the matter a little. They are undoubtedly illusionists of amazing skill, but they are rare. If all mediums practice sly of hand, we would have to agree that this art has made enormous progress in a short amount of time and has suddenly become very well known since it may be found to be an innate ability among persons who have never suspected it, even children. Those, the, those, the facts that they are charlatans who sell their snake oil in public and even doctors who privately abuse their clients' trust mean that all doctors are charlatans or that the medical class has lost it respectfully, respectability? Does, this, does the fact that there are persons who sell colored water as wine mean that all who sell wine are adulterers and that there is no such thing as pure wine? Anything can be abused, even the most respectable. And we may state that there is also genius in fraud. However, fraud always has some purpose, some material interest. When nothing can be gained from it, there is no interest in it. That is why we have stated that regarding paid mediums, the best of all guarantees is absolute unprofitableness. 
So um, not even gonna touch on this fact of physical phenomena, phenomena because the next topic that Kardec will address on 315. But the idea for someone out there, let's take ourselves out of being in contact with the doctrine, reading the news or pass in front of a crowd or anything, and it is a mediumistic phenomenon happening, right? Or intellectual or, or physical. If there is a degree of distrust of suspicion in our mind, I think it's absolutely respectable, honest, and perhaps even wise. If you remember in the beginning, Kardec himself would pay no attention to what's happening in, in France at that, uh, at that time in 50, 1855, 1856 was, you know, Paris was taken over by the sciences, you know, every corner you have, you have some sense happening and kind of say, I don't have time for this nonsense. I don't have time for this stupidity. I, I'm a serious man, I have important things to do here. It was not until he noticed that he was receiving an invitation to go to sciences of very serious intellectual individuals who deserve the respect, who deserve credibility. And that's when he first uh, went to one and saw the, the reality and was able to separate facts from fake news, um, real phenomena from charlatan news through tremendous amount of investigation, tremendous amount of, of um, research of what was happening. So we will not say, oh, these people who don't believe they're just not open-minded, they're just too uninvolved, no. I myself would not jump into it. And I think most of us would not just jump into it. So to have that degree of suspicion of need more facts, of need to go do a little more investigation before you accept and believe this, I don't think not only normal, but I think it's wise not to become a little prayer at the hands of smart guys out there, right? But to say that it does not exist, that it's, that it's impossible, then is a very extreme radical behavior that limits one's ability to learn something new. Every time that you close yourself to something, you, you waste, perhaps you waste an opportunity, right? And so for them to say, that there are smart people there, people with tremendous uh, manual de dexterity, individuals who can perform tremendous beautiful illusion years. You can imagine today, if the time of Kardec, there was those amazing illusionists already, can imagine today with technology and everything that is available to us here. You know, for someone who's not in contact with this doctrine to have a degree of suspicion is in my opinion wise. To be completely close is dumb. <clears throat> right, there is a, a, a degree uh, of separation rather than there. To jump on it head first immediately without doing some research and, and uh, in investigation is also dumb. So it's wise to have that degree of suspicion, but to be completely close and accused without proper investigation mediums of being charlatans is also just plain wrong. Because yes, there is people coloring wine and calling it, or coloring water and calling it wine. But there is real wine over there. There is people selling snake oil they say over there, but there is real remedy to illnesses out there. We have to be able to separate things. and that we have to do our investigation. You have to be wise not to become prey of charlatans out there. And one of 
things to start with, that leads to start with, is what is the motive? What's the intent? Is it material profit? And I say material profit cannot always is money. Okay, sometimes there'll be something else, some exchange of, of material goods. One of the things they would start that the investigator would say, individuals are getting paid to do this. If the individual is not getting paid to do this, it's already something positive. Why would put my time? Why would I place myself something that there is expense of energy uh, for, for no profit? There's something good, something of value in it that is more than just material gain. And that is a big positive already. So especially when it comes from, from um, physical manifestations that you're going to read now here, why especially irritative physical manifestations. Okay. Just a couple of notes here. Um, he talks about Mr. Home here. That's Douglas Home, a very famous medium of physical manifestations in the mid, mid in the middle of the, the 19th century uh, he mentions him on the magazine on the spiritist review of january and february 1858 that we have it published by the united states spiritist federation if you're curious and uh mr home is the previous incarnation of uh, divaldo Franco, as he already mentioned before so a medium in the, in the previous existence and a very uh, powerful medium in this incarnation. So it's, uh, it's really worth, uh, he, he presented his abilities to the emperor of France at that time. And there is this, uh, the story is there in the, in the Spiritist Review too, for those who are curious. Okay. Let's do one more. Okay. 315. Of all the spirit phenomena, those that are most susceptible to fraud are the ones involving physical effects. For reasons we must now consider. First, they are directed more towards sight than intelligence and are therefore most easily imitated by sly of hand. Second, they arouse more curiosity than the others are more appropriate for attracting crowds, and consequently, they are more, too, more fruitful. From this double point of view, it is easy to see why charlatans are so interested in imitating these manifestations. Since most spectators are unfamiliar with science, they are generally more interested in entertainment than serious instruction. And we know the entertainment always pays better than in instruction. There is a more decisive reason to consider, however. Sly of hand can imitate physical effects and only requires dexterity. For so far, it has not been gifted with improvisation, which requires an uncommon dose of intelligence. And it cannot therefore produce those beautiful and sublime sayings that spirits normally provide during their communications and which are frequently so apropos this reminds us of the following occurrence. A literary gentleman came to see us one day and said that he was a qualified intuitive writing medium and that he was available to the Spiritist Society. Since it was the society's policy not to accept mediums whose abilities we were unsure of, we asked the visitor first to come to a private meeting to provide us with evidence with, of his faculty. He actually came to the meeting where several mediums were either writing spirit dissertations or responding with remarkable precision to questions asked of them or about issues on unknown topics. When the visitor's turn came, he wrote some meaningless words, said that he was not feeling well that day and we never saw him again. He undoubtedly found that the role of an intelligent effects medium was more difficult to enact than he had thought. Okay. 
<clears throat> so as I said before that um, this manifestation is one that is more likely to be abused or uh, to have fraud, to have imitation, to be used by charlatans, by real illusionists, by individuals with the great, the great ability uh, of producing pseudo um, supernatural uh, effects. If you just turn on the TV right now and you find the right channel, you'll see a bunch of illusionists doing performing things that you shake your head, say, is that even possible? Individuals are able to do tricks that completely um, defies our reasoning, our ability to, to figure those things out. If some of those individuals who call themselves properly, so magicians, illusionists, choose to call themselves medium and say they are performing mediumist phenomena, I, I'm pretty sure that he will find a group of followers, he or she. There will be those who will truly believe that whatever this individual is doing come from, from the spirits. That is in, indeed a spiritual phenomenon. <clears throat> and why is that? One, the physical phenomena, it affects our physical senses. Meaning that if a medium of physical phenomena provides it energies to mediums to perform some effect, that effect will be noticeable by our physical senses. If it is an apparition, let's say if a spirit materializes, everyone in that room will see that spirit, be an ostensive medium or not. If the physical phenomenon is um, of audio, if they, if they bring a, um, an orchestra of a chorus of a spirit singing, everyone in that room will hear the singing of that chorus that comes from the spiritual world. It will, be, it will affect our physical ears, therefore physical phenomena, and that of all the, all the senses. It will be palpable. We will be able to touch and feel um, that apparition that's, that's there. There will be, there has been phenomena with the showering of flower petals in some spiritual center and which people could touch those, those petals, feel those petals, smell the smell of the flower, because it affects our physical senses, our, fear, our nose of affection, therefore physical phenomena. And of course, that is much more attractive. It will catch our attention. Even for us to understand the phenomena, it's possible not to catch well, our attention. If you are in a subway, trying to read your book or try to get, take a nap in the subway and these people around you talking out loud, you will hear not because you are interested, but because you catch, you hear you catch that sound. It's a physical phenomenon. Now you pay attention to it or not, it's a different thing. <clears throat> right? If something is happening, you'll see because you, your vision will be caught by the whatever is happening over there. You may be interested or not. You may pay attention to it or not. For that reason, a physical phenomenon is much more, there has a great, greater potential of 
of catching our attention, of attracting us. And if you are interested, you participate on it one way or another. And therefore, for the charlatans, the physical phenomenon is the one that is really the most uh, profitable, that they can use the most, right? And it more, uh, as Kardec puts over here, is more directed toward intelligence, more than the, the things of, of the moral aspect. If you are interested in how to become more patient, how to get uh, messages from the spirits on how to become more patient, how to have greater control over, over your um, jealousy, get a control of your impulses of violence, you likely need a uh, intelligent phenomenon. I'm not gonna get that from his phenomenon in general, in general, right? And that's more difficult to be acquired because it requires the spirits who has the ability to provide those messages. The physical phenomena is more common because it's practiced by commonplace spirits. The more evolved spirits are not even able to practice physical phenomena because of the or have the perispirit so ethereal to cannot associate with the more dense matters that are required for the exercise of physical phenomena. We're not gonna go into that now because that's a different study. But physical phenomena are practiced by spirits more average, like ourselves, so to say, right? So it's, there's more spirits able to provide that than, than provide eloquent, morally evolved messages. And because if you are seeking entertainment, how to control your patience, how to control your passions, how to become more charitable, it's not really what you're looking for. But if you look for the, the entertainment, then you'll be looking for physical phenomenon anyway. So naturally, Most of the frauds are done to the use of um, physical phenomena because they want that it's, you attract a greater public. There's more people in, more interested in the, in the entertainment than instruction. And I think Kardec, put, being a teacher, you know, used the opportunity to, to tell us it's you no know, teachers. I'm almost recognized, recognized, provide, providing to us, which I consider to be the most valuable of the profession, is to teach to educate. But an actor makes a lot of more money than a teacher. The most fame, the most famous actor of a teacher, you not make as much money as an average actor out there. So that goes that we are really more looking for entertainment than, than education. And therefore, entertainment is a lot more profitable and the uh, charlatans are going to use what they can be more profitable with entertainment, with this physical phenomena. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say on that topic. And then there is the, this case of this gentleman who came to Kardex offering himself his membership to the Worker Society when put to a test, it did not work as, as he thought it would. And he understood that a true serious membership needs to be studied, needs to be understand, understood and need to be associated with the desire of moral, moral gains above anything else. And by moral gains, it's put the medium himself first, the medium himself first, and then pass it along for those who receive those messages from the spirits.
Okay. Yes, do we stop here? Any comments? Any questions? Any doubts? Okay. I could okay. not. It looked like someone was trying to speak. No, it was me, Elmo. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, as a, a reminder, uh, next week, it's the last Sunday of the month. So we are going to have uh, the, the Q&A session, right? Um, I announced this event that I just posted here. Uh, we are having on February 5th at SGNY there, at SGNY building is a suite 4A, which is the one in front of our center. Uh, this mediumship forum, Lifting the Veil, Communicating with Spirits. Uh, registrations are open. It, it's free of charge, but you need to, uh, it's better to register. You don't need to register, but it's better to register so we can, uh, we can uh, estimate the number of people who will be present. It's going to be a uh, uh, 30 minute presentation on mediumship uh, according to spiritism and mediumship meeting according to spiritism. And uh, they will be followed by a QA and a session of uh, one hour and a half. And uh, we are going to have a testimonial there also. Um, it, you, it's not going to be uh, live in terms of online. It will be recorded only. So if you want to, to, to attend, please register. If you, need, if you have any questions, let us know. If you want to volunteer, let me know also. Um, we need we need volunteers also okay um i think that's it carol can i do a final prayer yes surely i will uh thank you very much elmo thank you john and sarita and thank you sarita for reading today and for everyone who has participated this morning Infinite creator and supreme intelligence, we are grateful to be together again as brothers and sisters for the studies of the mediums. May the spiritual benefactors and mentors protect us and guide us with our moral and intellectual development as we study serious and balanced mediumship. May we use discernment to avoid potential charlatanism, trickery, and spirit phenomena. God. May we be proactive and mindful of potential deceptions through paid mediumship and through the frivolous spirits that may come through. May we stay alert, vigilant, and educate ourselves regarding mediumship and the moral development and its values. We give thanks to the spiritual benefactors and our good spirits for guiding and inspiring us today. And may we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us, not only for us, but for our loved ones and friends. We pray for inner peace and world peace, and for those in the world who are suffering, and also those who are in need of help in the spiritual world. We pray for SGNY and the spirit centers worldwide that the centers may grow, expand, and continue to be protected. As we close, we humbly ask for safety and protection as we return to family, friends, and loved ones and coworkers. May we go forth and remind ourselves to continue our studies, our prayers, and mindfulness throughout the week. And as we leave now and go forth, may we, we become beacons of light in this year. We, want to endeavor to be more charitable and give more love, give more light, and assure ourselves that we do have the inner peace that can be spread throughout the world. Go forth now in peace. So be it. <laughs>